chip and many of my customers ask me what a good low-cost machine is and because people want to buy the the least expensive washer out there there's a lot of low-cost machine uh, models that come into my shop usually when their machine goes out they they don't spend a whole lot of money and so I guess that's just human nature a lot of people see that I'm going to give you a comparison of the two most common models that come in in my perspective as to what goes wrong with them and, and uh, what needs to be fixed now in my area of the country I see more of man and G machines than anything else specifically these two models the Amana NTW 4516 FW and the G model GTW 335 ASNWW. Let's compare these two washers from a service technician's point of view. So the Amana has a three and a half cubic feet porcelain uh, covered steel spin tub as compared to the GE's 4.2 cubic feet thin gauge stainless steel and plastic tub. Now just because the GE has that larger tub I don't recommend going uh, overloading the machine. One of the selling points of some of these modern machines is the oversized tubs. Unfortunately they didn't oversize the suspension systems when they decided to do this and many people ruin their washers by stuffing a king size comforter in just because it's going to fit in that tub. Now let's compare the electronics. Many times clients will bring me a machine that someone else has, has looked at and told them that the control board is malfunctioning and it isn't worth replacing. Now most of the time this isn't true. Some other things usually going to be the problem but because the service person who looked at it was poorly trained or just doesn't want to do what needs to be done to fix the device they tell the customer it isn't worth fixing. For the most part both the GE and the Amana have satisfactory electronic boards. They certainly aren't the top of the line but they, they work well enough. And a quick diagnostic check is going to tell a technician whether the parts defective or not. And if you want to see how to uh, diagnose a, a MANA machine and a G machine, I'll put the two links up here for uh, to do either one of them. Now, if the control board is the problem, uh, many times your service tech will have uh, a used replacement somewhere in a drawer and uh, they'll offer you a substantial discount if you agree to waive any guarantees he offers if you put a new part in. As far as replacing these computer boards on both machines, they're about equal when compared to cost and labor. and It's a real easy job to do. Now, if we look at the lid locks, lid locks are one of the most often replaced items I do on a man of machines. And in my experience, they need to be replaced more often than on the GE models. The Amana lid lock is going to cost you around $25, uh, and the GE is about $32. So, with your service tech's markup and his labor cost, the price to replace one would be about the same for both models. But you'd probably replace it more often during the lifetime of the Amana washer compared to the GE. Now when we compare the Amana suspension system to the General Electric uh, suspension system, I can only say that the GE is going to beat the Amana hands down. When GE designed their suspension rods, they got it right. Uh, and if you want to know why, you can watch this video link right up here. I did a, did a, a, a breakdown of, of suspension rods and it tells you all about them. Most of the time, the suspension rods on the G is going to last the lifetime of that machine. The Amana rods, they're junk. They're going to wear out almost always during the time you own the, the unit. Usually in about two years if you're doing, doing the laundry for a family of four and that family's active. Also, it, if you uh, don't address the suspension rod problem on the Amana, as soon as it occurs, you're going to risk doing enough damage to that spin basket that a repair is going to be too costly and you'll have to replace that unit anyway. Uh, so, now, both the G and the Amana washers come into my shop with the customers uh, complaining that this, they fail to spin the clothes out. And when I get a GE with this complaint, the first thing I'm going to do is examine that belt. Many times you're going to find that it's been compromised by oil and this oil is going to soften that belt cause it to slip on the pulleys. It's really confusing. The GE gearbox is lubricated with grease unlike the Amana which has a, a real stinky gear oil in it. I have no idea where the oil on the GE belt comes from. After examining the transmission seals most of the time there's no evidence of a leak. Maybe it comes from the motor and it's a, a result of lubrication during the manufacturing process. I don't know. 
To fix this issue, I changed the spongy belt with a stiffer new one and I wipe away any oil from the motor pulleys, the large transmission pulley, the, uh, the covers, the guards, anywhere that I can find oil under that, that machine. It's usually only on a machine with, with a first time service that I find it. And after you replace that, that belt once and clean all that oil out of the area, you really have the same issue twice. If you compare this to the Amana, the Amana drive belt never needs attention. Well, rarely. Now, when the Amana machine has spin issues, though, it's usually going to be a splutch problem or it could be a shift actuator problem. The G shifters are more robust and they consist of, of an actuator and a shift clutch. Uh, the shift clutch is a one piece gear that slides up and down the spin shaft splines by means of a yoke and that's attached to the actuator motor. Now, the Amana is a bit more complex and it has a splutch mechanism that uses four parts, including a shaft spring. And as a service technician, I think that if there are more parts to a mechanism, there's more going to be more things to fail. So the G is going to win in this category too, and I, I rarely find any problems with a shifting device on a, on a G. Also, the Amana shift actuator is, is a two-function part. It has the motor speed sensor included on the, the shifter. And for the, the G motor speed sensor is a removable piece that's attached to the motor itself. And I think because it isn't integrated into one unit on the, on the G, the cost to replace the parts for this is going to be less. So in comparing the shift mechanisms, I'd say the G is going to win here also. Now, both the G and the Amana motors rarely fail, so I'd say they're probably equal in this comparison. They, in fact, they're probably made by the same manufacturer, uh, just see different specifications. Uh, one for G, one for I don't, I don't know where they come from, but the, the motors on e either of these units rarely fail. Okay, if you look at the gearboxes on these machines, again, G has a better built component. G gearboxes use grease to lube the inside, uh, moving parts while Amana uses gear oil and both machines have gear cases in their tack welding so that the bearings are not going to be serviceable if the bearings go out the seals go out you have to change the entire gearbox a very, very expensive uh, piece both of these machines are known to have bearings that fail though but the Amana bearings and seals fail a lot more often than the G I suspect it's because the bottom seal fails when the inner workings of the, the the G gearbox maintains lubrication from from the grease, whereas when the, they fail on a um, on an Amana, the oil runs out, so the, the the gears inside dry out and wear out faster. So anyway, the, the G is going to win the, the gearbox category. Okay, if we're if we're comparing drain pumps of these machines, I have easily replaced more G water pumps than Amana pumps. I don't know why, but this is it's odd because when you look at these two pump bodies they seem to be the same construction and they're probably made from the same outsource manufacturer they on, the only difference I can see on the on these two pumps is the power interface the, on a G model the pumps come with a power core that's attached directly to the, the pump and in the man up pumps has a female plug on the side where the wiring harness of the machine uh, attaches now the General Electric pump is also a bit more expensive than the Amana. Uh, when it goes to water pumps, Amana is going to be the clear winner. Now, if you were to purchase either of these models today, you're going to expect to pay about uh, around $80 more for the General Electric as compared to the Amana. But I would say the increase in reliability of the G, although it isn't an extreme gain in quality, it's worth it. All in all, if I were going to be in the market for a low-end machine that I wouldn't expect to be having for a very long time and as a technician that knows these machines inside and out I'd go ahead and pick the GE over the the Amana. If I were wanting to buy a washing machine that was going to last me a lifetime I'd pick a, a Speed Queen and to see that review check out this link right up here. Now, thanks for watching I'll see you on the next one and Chip is out.